Hi friends, today is Tuesday the 15th, glad you're with us. Today we're going to shift gears from Mary. We've spent three days on Mary, talking about her faithfulness. And now we're going to be talking about the faithfulness of Joseph, her betrothed and to be husband. We're talking about the faith of the believer. Remember, we're going through this Christmas story according to the Advent wreath. So far, we've talked about the, of course, faith of Mary and Joseph and the Bethlehem candle as they make this pilgrimage to Bethlehem. We've talked about the hope of the prophets. Through the eyes of the prophets, we have hope in the story of Jesus. We've talked about the joy of the shepherds, and we'll begin our study there in earnest on Thursday. And then the week after, we're going to finish up this particular series as we look at the, what's called the peace candle or the angel's candle, as we look at the peace that the angels brought. So, as you continue to light the candles in your Advent wreath, uh, remember then, uh, this week and then towards the end of the week, that we are a people of hope and faith and joy and peace, evidenced throughout the story of Christmas in the prophets, in Mary and Joseph, in the shepherds, and through the angels. That's where we're going, and this is where we are. Joseph, chapter 1 of the Gospel of Matthew and verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to, to divorce her and quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. It's only been a week, a little over, since I preached a sermon on Joseph as a model of one who loved himself. And I'm not going to go there again to spare those who have already heard that sermon. And if you haven't, would encourage you to go on to our YouTube channel, richlandlutheran.org. Uh, just search for us there on YouTube and uh, watch that sermon that was preached then on the 6th, Sunday of the 6th, a uh, week before last Sunday. What I want to look at in the next two days is how Joseph remained faithful to God. And there, there are two ways that this particular passage, I believe, points out. The first is Joseph lived according to the law. And then the second, we'll look at the first then today, and the second we'll look at tomorrow, that Joseph considered what God was saying to him through this angel, this, this maybe presence of God himself. So we'll look at that tomorrow, however. For today, we're reminded, verse 19, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law. 
At the end of the day, Joseph rises to this, to this, to this occasion that God is calling him to. And what is that occasion? Well, to come alongside Mary, even though, or maybe because, she's pregnant. You know, don't you, that this would be difficult for Joseph. Today, it's not that uncommon (laughs) that our society gets the order of what's appropriate for relationships mixed up. And so there are many children who are born out of wedlock. However, in the first century, this was very rare, mostly because it was punishable by death. And when I say it, I mean adultery, or as the New Testament calls it, uh, fornication. Uh, The Greek word is porneia. Uh, We get our word pornography from that Greek word. But that word porneia in the Greek means uh, sexual uh, fornication. That is sex outside of the marital unit. And so Mary had not had relations with Joseph. They had not had sex yet. They were betrothed. And so when Joseph gets news that Mary is pregnant, he's not that dumb. (laughs) He knows how a woman gets pregnant. And he knows he and Mary haven't taken that step in their relationship. And so as an act of grace and love, he decides to divorce her because he also knows that he can't live in this relationship with her if she's committed adultery against him. And so because he was faithful to the law, this is what Joseph decides to do. Now, God was going to change those plans. Um, Joseph paused. We'll talk about that tomorrow to consider what God was doing here and then subsequently changed his mind. But I want to suggest to you that Joseph is faithful to God because Joseph is following the law. What does it mean to follow the law? Well, in Joseph's context, he was following the law for for righteousness sake. Well, we know because of Jesus himself, but Joseph wouldn't have known, that righteousness comes through Jesus and Jesus, Jesus alone. So, Joseph, though, was trying his hardest to live according to the law that he might be in a right relationship with God. And though that can't happen in its fullness, Joseph was still faithful to God through the law. What do we learn from him then here? I think namely that though we aren't saved by our right works, by adhering to the law, we do live out our sanctification, that is, our Christian discipleship, our spiritual formation, by living according to God's commands and statutes. Unfortunately, there are those within Christendom that throw out the law of God, the Old Testament in totality sometimes, and they say, well, we live as New Testament Christians by the grace of God. Well, though salvation comes through the grace of God, we still are responsible to live out the law, to live in a right relationship with God through adherence to God's commands and statutes. Those who throw out the law are technically or theologically known as anti Nomian. Anti means, well, against, and nomos, 
in the Greek in the New Testament means, uh, means law. So they are literally antinomian against the law. But we are not against the law. <laughs> Jesus lived a law-filled life. In fact, he lived it perfectly. Paul lived a law-filled life, not perfectly, but as Paul said, he could boast <laughs> according to the law that he lived. He was a Pharisee among Pharisees. Uh, he was taught by the best of the best, Gamaliel, the rabbi of rabbis. The Jews who received Jesus as Messiah also lived by the law. We too live by the law, not for salvation, not that we are made right with God, not that we are justified, not that we are saved by the law. No, we're saved by grace through faith, but our faith lives out the law. So I want you to consider this today. Do I listen to the law of God? Do I live that law? Am I concerned about my model and example in life? Do I use the commands of God, the Ten Commandments, the rest of the prophets, even the wisdom literature, as guides to live this life? Because if you think about it, what else do we have except God's statutes and precepts, which are good for us? God, God's law helps us to live in right relationship with Him and each other. Not for the sake of salvation, but that we might live out our lives saved already, but sanctified, made glorious and holy uh, by our living. That's what I want you to think about today. Consider it. We can't just throw out the law, uh, but live by it so that we might model an example to others, we are indeed in Christ Jesus. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for your law. As the psalmist says, the, your precepts, your instruction is so wise and for our benefit. Lord, we pray then that we would live by these precepts, by your law, by faith, that we might be a model and example of how, of how one comes to salvation apart from the law, but then lives in a right relationship with you through it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, it's been great to be with you on this Tuesday. Tomorrow we're going to look at Joseph again and see what kind of faith he's continuing to model that we might live faith out in our own lives. God bless you. Miss you. Love you. Bye-bye.